So you have some dingy decoys. What can you do? Should you repaint them? Well, maybe, but there's another trick you can try. Watch this video and find out all about it. I'm Joel Strickland, and this is Surviving Duck Season. This video is brought to you by Mojo and High and Dry Waders. Hey everybody, it's a great day today. Thanks for watching this video. Now I've got a bunch of decoys laying around here. Uh, these are all kind of dingy looking. Uh, you can see this one here, it just doesn't have the luster that it once had. A lot of the higher quality decoys today, they have good paint schemes, they have a good uh, way to, to adhere the paint to the plastic, but they still you know, get dingy after you know, just a short period of time. And what happens is we hunt in, in water that uh, you know, is cloudy, muddy, it's got you know, sediment in it, and that sediment collects on the decoys when it dries off. And you know, initially you can kind of wipe that off, but after hunt after hunt of mud, you know, muddy water and that sort of thing, uh, it just gets to where you really have got to scrub the decoy to get it clean. Uh, plus the fact that you know, going in and out of the decoy bags, you know, in and out of your boat, just the wear and tear, you know, sitting in the sun, that sort of thing, kind of take that luster off the decoys. All these decoys that I have here don't necessarily need to be repainted. Um, you know, most of them have only been used for one season. They just get dingy and, and dull looking. Uh, they've kind of lost their luster. And so um, rather than repainting them this year, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna try something new. I've got something right here. Uh, this is a can of decoy conditioner. Now, they have not put me up to doing this video. I saw an ad for it and thought, hmm, that's interesting. Uh, I wanna see what this is all about. So I, uh, I got online and, and found uh, Shields has it for 25 bucks plus shipping. I think I paid about $30 in total. So it better be pretty good. I also went to Walmart and bought a can of this Krylon matte finish for six bucks. Seen several people talking about using it. And then I also went to Hobby Lobby and got a can of this Rust-Oleum top coat dead flat, nine bucks. So I'm gonna do a comparison between all three products on this video and see which one we like best. Okay, so before we get into the comparison, we need to get these decoys cleaned up. And honestly, sometimes that's all it really takes to make your decoys look better is just clean them up. Now make sure you stick around to the end of the video because I got a really cool piece of footage. It's like 20 years old. You won't want to miss it. So we've got the decoys cleaned up and now they've dried out and now we're ready to try out our three different products. Uh, what I did was I've grabbed three hens to start the initial comparison because they all look basically the same. They're in the same condition. One of them is a, is a teal and the other two are, are hen mallards. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray each of the three products on, on you know, each decoy and then we'll kind of be able to, to uh, give it a comparison to see what we think looks better. So we're gonna shake these products up really, really good. So the first thing I'm using is a decoy conditioner on this hen right here. really not doing much. Okay, so this is the Krylon matte finish uh, 1311. What I'm going to do is let these dry for a bit, then we'll see the before and after shots. Rust-Oleum uh, dead flat that I'm using right here on the teal. That's pretty good. Yep. decoy conditioner. I can tell the difference on that one. Okay, now for the matte finish. And this is the Dead flat Rust-Oleum. Okay, so I've got a Dakota flocked head decoy right here. Um, and it says here on decoy conditioner that you can use it on flocking. So 
we're gonna spray it and see what, what, what it looks like. Turn that a little bit so you can see. Now this flocking, granted, is in horrible shape. It needs to be reflocked probably, but I was kind of hoping that maybe by spraying that stuff on there, it'd make it look better. This is a GHG um, Greenhead Gear Hot Buy. It probably needed repainting, but it, it's definitely dingy looking. You see how horrible that looks. We're gonna go ahead and spray the, uh, the top coat from Rust-Oleum, the dead flat, and see if it makes any improvements on it. I'm really not seeing a very big difference in these dingy decoys. Maybe I'll see a better difference on some of my really weathered decoys. I was going through some of my old decoys and I found um, a bunch of my G&H decoys and these pintails look horrible. I mean, look at that. They're not even brown. They're more of like a like a khaki-ish, pinkish kind of color. So I don't know what's gonna happen. I went ahead and cleaned them up and so let's go ahead and spray them and see what happens. This first pintail we're gonna do with decoy conditioner. Well, I gotta say that this is uh, pretty impressive. Pretty, pretty impressive on that. I mean, it's not perfect, but man, that looks really good with the uh, dead flat top coat. This one looks really, really good too. I mean, that's pretty awesome. It's got a little bit right there that it may be, uh, maybe needs another coat or two. It's looking good, we'll see when it dries. I'm gonna do this last pintail with the matte finish. Let's see what happens up here especially. So far, this one has really impressed me on this particular um, decoy. Probably could sit for another 30 or 45 minutes, so I'm gonna let them all do that and just see how they cure out. So I added more coats of spray to some of these decoys just to see if it would make a difference. And then I've let them dry for four hours. And now we can look at the before and after. So this is the decoy conditioner and honestly, I don't really see much difference. Uh, the Krylon, again, just very subtle difference. Using Rust-Oleum Flat, it definitely looks better. Not a lot better, but it does look some better. Now the decoy conditioner on this Drake Mallard does look a little bit better, but still not that much. Yeah, I'm not seeing any difference at all in this one. And uh, on this Rust-Oleum, I do see a slight difference, maybe just a little bit darker. Kind of the same thing with this green headgear mallard. It's just not much. I had a pretty big surprise with the pintails. Um, I started out with pintails that look like this. They have this nasty faded out look and I had six pintail drakes. And, uh, but actually this one is one that was sprayed and uh, it it's doesn't look any different than it did when it started. I mean, I, I'm just really very surprised because the other two look fine. Look at that. They look good. I mean, this one's head looks nice. This one's head looks nice. They, they've kind of darkened up their body a lot. The white pops really pretty. And uh, I mean, just kind of a striking difference between these two right here, right there. Isn't that nuts? So, I bet you're wondering, well, which one is which? <laughs> okay, this one is actually the decoy conditioner, the $30 can of spray. Um, I was really surprised because looking at the other uh, decoys, 
that we use it on, I thought that it was not the best, but I thought it was the second best. And this one is actually the worst. In fact, I can't even, I mean, I can't even justify it at all, you know, based on this. This one here is the, uh, the top coat from the Rust-Oleum and uh, it looks really, really, really good. Um, it's all darkened up really, really pretty and uh, everything else, of course, on the decoy looks nice. And then this one is, is the uh, Krylon um, matte finish and it looks, it looks pretty close to the same. I mean, I, I wouldn't be disappointed in this, in this decoy either. Now, um, you know, my opinion in looking at the all, you know, all the decoys as a whole, I felt like that the, that the uh, Rust-Oleum product right here performed slightly better um, than, than the rest of them did. So which product do you think is better? Let me know in the comment section below. Also, I'd be interested in knowing, is this something that you would do? Would you buy one of these products to uh, use it to make your decoys look better? I'll leave in the description section of this video some links to where you can find these products. Okay, now for the shot of the week. Uh, this one is from about 20 years ago, so it's standard definition, old footage, and uh, it's in Arkansas at a friend of mine's club called Prairie Wings Duck Club. This is a fine set of woods. And when I think about the most perfect bunch of ducks coming in tight into the timber, this is what I think about every time. Smoke them. That was it, y'all. That, that entire was hunt was awesome. Uh, I've got dozens and dozens of uh, those kind of hunts from back in the day, as they say. And uh, in fact, I've had quite a few um, of y'all tell me that you wish I would show some of my old footage, maybe even put some hunts together. 331 Slash says, please, please edit more of your old footage and put them up as full hunts. And Chasing Green says, would love to see any old vintage hunts you could put together. That stuff is rare to see. Well, what do you think? Is that something you'd like to see? Let me know in the comment section below. I've been thinking about maybe pulling out the uh, old archives and putting together some hunts. And speaking of old hunts, here's one right here. Check it out. It's the first time I ever used a spinning wing decoy back in the 90s. I talk all about it. It's a pretty cool hunt. And if you wanna see some more tips and tactics, check out those videos right there. Until next time, I'm Joel Strickland. Good hunting and God bless.